Hey everyone, I'm Tech Steve, and on today's video, I'm going to show you guys the Samsung Q60T television set. Now, the great thing about this set, it is an upgrade from the TU7000 and 8000 because it has the Q LED technology, which is going to give you much better colors. Also, this TV set is supported with the Bixby, Amazon Alexa, and there's a lot more features inside of it. So, in this video, we're going to talk about the features, I'm going to show you guys the picture quality, and we're going to do some latency tests and more. So if you're interested in a new television set, this may be the one for you. So sit back and relax, and let's get started. So I hope you guys like that demo I just showed you guys. And I would tell you that the viewing angles and the black levels are really good on this television set. And thanks to the quantum LED technology, that's gonna give you that best picture quality. Also, I'd like to tell you guys that this TV set has two backlights on it. There's a cool one and a warm temperature one. So they work together to give you even better colors as well. And you don't get that on the TU 7000 or 8000, but I love those TV sets. Also, if you guys are looking to do PlayStation 5 in the future, this is a 60 hertz television set. So I know the PS5 can go up to 120, but keep in mind that it is backwards compatible with any television set that has an HDMI input. But if you're a hardcore gamer, you wanna go with something a little more expensive. This may not be the one for you, but who knows what games can be compatible when that comes out. Also, a few other things about this television set is that it supports HDR10, HDR10+, Plus, and HLG, so it has all the different formats, so it's going to give you a much better picture quality than a lot of TV sets out there. Now what I'm going to do is show you guys the design of the television set. We're going to look at the inputs on the back as well as the bezel, so let's get started. This Q60T has the small thin bezels around the television set that makes it look really clean and has those new snap-in feet which are easy to remove and they're gray in color. For those who are interested, here's the energy saving guide and you can see it doesn't use that much energy to run a TV set like this. In the front of the television set, you do have a Samsung logo with an LED light and you can also get through the mini system by hitting the buttons on the bottom of the TV set. But like I said in previous videos, you don't want to lose remote control because this is hard to navigate. On the left hand side of the back of the TV set, you have your power input. You have the screw holes for mounting it on the wall. You also have two USB inputs, two HDMIs, and antenna input on one side of the television set. You also have a third HDMI, a fiber optic output, a composite input, and a LAN connection for connecting it to the internet directly. The model that I'm using in this video is a 43 inch that retails for $529 here in the US, but they do make it all the way up to 85 inch if you need a larger television set. Now there's two ways you can set this television set up. There's one of using the Samsung SmartThings application on your smart device, or you can do what I'm about to do in this video is use the remote control. You may press the right button to set up the TV with the TV remote. The accessibility function is available when you press and hold the volume button. So now we're gonna go ahead and press the right on the remote control. Now this screen is basically showing you all the different things you have plugged into it, whether it's an antenna, a PlayStation, an Xbox, Roku devices. And at the bottom here, you can put in retail mode and that's more for stores. But let's go and press next. Now we're gonna connect to Wi-Fi, and it does support 2.4 gigahertz as well as five gigahertz. Now you can go ahead and type in your password and you see here at the top, you can show your password as you type it in if you like. Now if you plan on using an application, you need to read through all the terms and conditions and go ahead and agree. Next, you need to sign into your Samsung account or create one. Now this TV does have Bixby, which is a Samsung voice command, and you can use Amazon Alexa. In case you have Amazon device in your house, you can set this up to control those as well. But let's go and use Bixby for now. Now we need to set up the Bixby by hitting start at the bottom. Now press the microphone on the remote control and follow the commands on the screen. Hi Bixby. And that's pretty much it. And this is where you can choose to back up your TV settings, which I will. I can also restore all the settings from my previous install of a Samsung television, but I'm not going to do that. Now go ahead and put in your zip code so Bixby knows the area that you're in. And if you have any of these applications at the bottom, like the paid Apple Music, Discovery Gold, 
Showtime, Disney Now. You can go and sign into those, but I'm not gonna do that. And you can also use the SmartThings application to control some of the settings on this TV set. I'll show you that later in the video. Now Samsung does have built-in internet TV. You can use that now by hitting start watching. Whew, got that out of the way. Now let me show you guys the remote control. So here's the remote control that comes with it. On top you have your power button as well as the microphone hole. You also have some hot keys here, the button for the mic. Also this TV has ambient mode where you can put it more like in a picture frame mode and that button right there triggers that. You have your side to side up and down and enter to select. A back button, home button, play pause. Then you can press the button down for the mute or volume up and down, changing the channels, and then you have hotkeys for Netflix, Prime Video, and the Samsung built-in streaming television. Using the remote control, having it set up on Bixby, now I'm going to show you some of the voice commands. What's the weather like today? Today, it is partly cloudy with a high of 76 degrees and a low of 68 degrees. Tell me a joke. I want to go see the movie Broken Arm. From what I'm told, it has a real strong cast. Open up Netflix. Open up Amazon Prime. Take me to the App Store. So you can see it's very responsive. And when it comes to gaming, this television set is a beast. It can run PlayStation and Xbox with HDR 4K 60 frames per second with an HDMI 2.0 cable. And just like the TU8000, this TV set also has the Gaming Motion Plus feature. And this allows you to go in here and configure everything to be a lot smoother. You can customize the juddle reduction. It also has this LED clear motion which sharpens up the picture when images are moving really fast. That's going to really help out for those first person shooting games. Now I'm going to check the input lag on this television set, but I will tell you I tested it earlier and it is a little bit scrambled. I'm not sure if Samsung's doing it or they figure out a way for people not to do it. Well, let's check it out. And with the gaming mode turned off, it's reading almost 71 milliseconds. Now let's turn on the gaming mode and see how faster it gets. And it looks like it drops down to about 18 milliseconds, which is pretty good because a good range is about 40 or less. Now let's take a closer look at ambient mode. This mode is cool because it allows you to put the TV in a mode so it can display pictures whenever you're not using it. Just kind of give you some kind of ambiance. So you can set up your own album, but we're going to just go over here and look at artwork. And what it's going to do is download some content from the internet. So whenever you're not using the television set, it will actually display this. And again, you can use your own pictures if you have a Samsung device and upload them to your Samsung cloud. Let me go and turn off the lights to give you guys a little more example of what it does. And that's a nice little background drop just to have in your TV set whenever you're using it. And plus it's low energy. And you can see the TV gets brighter when it's not in ambient mode. And back to dimming itself. Now I don't know if you guys know this or not, but if you have like a keyboard and a mouse that uses a USB dongle or Bluetooth, you can actually hook it up to this television set. So what you would do is take this thumb drive, go into the back of the TV set and just plug it in and that's pretty much it. To go to the internet is very easy. You just pull up your home screen by hitting the house button on your remote control. Then you want to go over here to where it says internet, go ahead and press on it. And as you can see now, my mouse is actually working just like it would on a normal computer. The first screen you have like your features, visitor websites, bookmarks, open tabs. And if you hit the three dots up here in the corner, you can get to the internet menu. Go down to settings. Here you can see your general settings, like pop-up blockers. You can go to your home page so you can set one up, like Google for example. You have your search engine over here. And there's an option of Google or Bing, privacy settings, delete all your history. You can also put a parental control just in case you take the computers from the kids. You can go over here and put a lock on it so they can't use the TV to browse the internet. And then you have encoding for web pages and about. Now, if you want to go to a website, you can just go up here and just press on it and then just use your keyboard like normal. As you can see, I just typed in my name and I can go here. Let's say, for example, I want to go to uh, Facebook, I can press on that. And let's say I want to watch a video, I can just press on it like any other web browser. And also I'll tell you, if you linked into your Samsung account, all your history will pop up on that as well so it all syncs together. Now we're gonna listen to the audio on the speaker. I'm just gonna play some music, maybe something with some beats and something also with some uh, vocals on it. 
But if you guys ever wonder, this is the website that I actually use to put the music on my videos right now. It is a paid service and it's really designed for content creators, but you can buy your own music on here as well and use it in your own videos. But you'll find a link in my description below. So if you're not the type of person who wants a sound bar, those 20 watt speakers sound pretty good to me. Some other things about this TV set, it does have Bluetooth in it, so you can hook up your headphones as well as keyboards, remote controls, mouses, and things like that. It also has Wi-Fi built in which supports 2.4, 5 gigahertz, and AC, so you have plenty of range on just about any Wi-Fi router on there. Now I did some internet tests earlier, it seemed to be a little bit slower as far as picking up things that I'm used to like on my computer but it actually gave you a pretty decent experience. Also people are asking when you click through the menu there's a little bit of delay on everything and that's just the way the software is designed is open up applications and a lot of TVs don't have a really fast processor like a computer so unfortunately when you hit on something hit on something else sometimes there is like a little bit of buffering and you'll see like a hourglass spinning while it kind of figures itself out but that's a normal thing in this television set. Some other things is that you can hook it up to Ethernet, so if you want to plug it right into a router, you can do that. And that remote control is RF, meaning that it's radio frequency, so you can take it to another room and turn the volume up. Also, it is programmable automatically from the TV set on most devices, so if you plug a PlayStation in, it's going to know it's a PlayStation. You plug a cable box in, it's going to know it's a cable box. So it is a very smart television when it comes to that aspect. So again, I made a lot of videos showing you more features and I'll leave a playlist at the end of this video so you guys can go check it out on the TU-7000, the TU-8000, also the RU-7100 models and those models will help you out learning more features. Now one thing I want to address here on this video is that I buy these television sets to make the videos for you guys. So I'm not in a big warehouse where I have all the TV sets that are on the market. So when you guys ask me to compare one TV to another one, I would just go on Google and search for it because there's also kind of people who actually put together websites that can give you a comparison. But unfortunately, I buy one TV at a time, I make the videos for you, then I get rid of that television set, then I bring another one in. So sorry I don't have every TV on the market. Also that these TV sets is 60 hertz and if you're in the UK, usually that's 50 hertz, but that 50 hertz is only used whenever you're using it on regular television because they use PAL. So if you plug a PlayStation into it, it's going to go to 60 hertz. So it will support PlayStations and things like that as long as you have the right electrical source. So I'm Tech Steve. Make sure you go and give me a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel. Thanks a lot for watching, guys, and I'll see you on the next video. Peace.